Hello and welcome back to my garage. Today a sad story and a new beginning. Well the sad story is my old make welder has died. It is in my family for well roughly 30 to 35 years. I do still remember my dad bought uh, that unit but unfortunately it has died. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's probably something to do with the coils or something but it just doesn't do its job anymore. So yeah, I had to buy a new MIG welder. Unfortunately I was uh, saving up for a uh, tube bender because I need that for the Corolla but of course I also need a MIG welder for the Corolla and for now the MIG welder is more important than a tube bender. Here we have this Sherman DigiMIG 215 I chose this machine because, uh, well, to be honest, it was in my uh, price range and I really wanted a pulse machine, um, not because I am really into depth of welding, but, but my understanding is that it's better for thinner materials and it will uh, uh, be less spatter. So hey, everybody knows MIG welding is really aggressive, a lot of spatter most of the time and with uh, pulse welding it would be a lot uh, less. So uh, second of all, uh, why Sherman? Well, my TIG welder is also from this brand and to be honest, I'm really happy with it. It is just working perfectly. I don't use it as much as I want to. I have to still do a lot of practice, even after more than a year that I have that thing. But it is getting there, but I want to do some stainless and uh, well, that's a whole other uh, set of well a learning curve let's uh, say it like that again uh, i had two choices between uh, well the stalwerk and of course sherman i uh to be honest the sherman was budget wise better with the well the amount of features that this has but i probably never going to use but it is in there well my first impressions is it is pretty uh solid it is a just a solid machine just like that um, it has some heft to it it feels like it has some uh, rather thick material but that is what we're going to uh, to check and there is already one thing I definitely do not like and that is this why why it, it's oh well but before I'm going to turn it on let's uh, have a look inside that's because this thing is loose, it definitely sounds like a cheap ass toy. Oh well. Wow. Well, to be honest, this has some heft to it. It really feels like a solid door. It definitely doesn't look of it feels cheap. I will uh, measure the thickness. Uh, well, here is the torch. Oh, it came with a... Uh, I do believe this is the MB24 style nozzle. I did not know that. Not that it's too big of a problem. It is of course obvious if I think about it because the uh, MB-15 one that is uh, that I having on the other uh, machine is for um, maximum what was it 150 amps 180 amps something like that and of course this is a 200 amp machine well let's uh, put this uh, to the side for now obviously you have a room for uh, well I call it the one kilo and the five kilo rolls the, I usually use those 5 kilo rolls. So those uh, really big ones uh, are definitely not going to fit. And I know that uh, Stahlwerk has the machines with a external unit that you can fit those bigger units in. But uh, yeah, these 5 kilo rolls are uh, what I normally use. Because I do not weld that much and most of the time uh, it's going to oxidize before I'm running out of material. So then I have to throw it away anyway. So uh, yeah, five kilo rolls is for me just right. 
We do have a warning label, but this is something I definitely cannot read. So I have to translate that for later. It has something to do with al aluminum, so probably something with to do with the rolls. Because um, you have uh, to use the correct rolls for the material you are feeding through the machine. Other than that, it has a uh, quick uh, disconnect. Of course, you can, you can uh, adjust the tension. And this feels... This feels quite solid. It, it, it feels like it's going to last for definitely a while. It doesn't feel any not cheap or anything. If I am... Uh, Looking, this is of course a roll, and if I'm looking through it, it looks like it's meant for aluminum. Why do they include that? This is most obviously that most people won't buy this machine for aluminum. It's that's uh, really a bit weird. Of course, you have two crews. One is for uh, one uh, uh, millimeter thick frets, and the other is for 1.2. Uh, of wire, of course. So maybe there is something somewhere in a box other wheels, but we have to look into that. Of course, most of the time I weld with uh, 1.8, I believe. Yeah, 1.8. It is not that it doesn't work, but of course it is not uh, meant to uh, be used with that thread, so you can get clogs or slip or something like that. So. Keep that in mind, so we have to be sure that we are going to look into that, that roll. And maybe that's the sticker. The feeder is armed for aluminum wire. If you want to weld the steel wire, change the handle and feeder. I don't know what I mean by handle. Well, it is, this is for me quite strange. Oh well, it is what it is. Well, um, so five kilogram spooler uh, spools. The um, obviously the, the the feeder itself, and there is a switch right here for uh, spool gun or standard. Well, maybe that's what I mean by uh, armed of um, uh, the feeder because uh, it is now selected for spool gun. So let's uh, set it to uh, well the standard. But yeah, other than that. Like I said, it is quite a solid door. It's easy uh, accessible. Uh, the paint on it is, yeah, there is a little bit of orange peel on it, but for the rest it looks quite decent. Well, the print screening of the logo itself is a bit, uh, well, worn or not printed on there correctly. But that's something I personally do not care. But yeah, like I said, I hopefully they put the money into well the electronics and not into well paint and stuff like that of course uh, a nice looking machine is always great but i rather have a good working machine than a well a nice looking machine other than that this looks uh, plastic uh of of this blue plus this is plastic and i do believe it's abs i do not know for sure maybe there is markings on the inside uh, to confirm that it is i do believe the same material they use on hmm. i have a feeling that it is a little bit softer than the material they used on the on the tick welder let me double check yeah definitely yes it is it, it is just a little bit softer so maybe this is, uh, I don't know for sure if that other one was ABS or not, but this looks like it could withstand a little bit more beating because for cracking. Well, the backside is uh, nothing too special. Of course, the wire on and off switch and of course uh, the feed for uh, the gas. The wire itself, well, it has some printing on it, but uh, it says it has uh, three, of, uh, three wires, 2.5 millimeter. This is a 220 machine. This is not a 380 like my uh, other machine was, 
well it is just not necessary for uh, this amount of power anymore and to be honest i do not weld really fixed stuff uh, most of the time so but there is a uh, a wire there are well at least some markings on it uh, well the other markings it definitely says nothing to me So I do not think it's any, well, uh, any quality control brand. It is about, uh, let's say about two meters long, probably 1.8. Of course, we have uh, to take a look at the front. Well, uh, well, this is of course the most interesting part of the machine. Well, we have two uh, rotating dials, a display and a menu button. Uh, other than that, well, in this case, we can switch uh, the polarity of our machine or, well, yeah, the polarity to uh, negative on the piece or positive on the piece or vice versa, just how you want to call it. In some cases, it is preferred, especially with uh, welding uh, uh, aluminum and stuff like that. Uh, here we have the plug for the uh, spool gun. Is something I do not have included because I'm probably not going to use it so yeah I just don't want to pay an extra well 50 60 70 euros for a spool gun of course this is uh, here we are going to connect our uh, our gun <laughs> let's call it that other than that yeah some ventilation holes stuff like that uh, yeah uh, this are just standard DIN connectors, uh, 13 DIN in this case. Uh, well, these things are 13 millimeter. And I do already something I do not like. Yeah, that is something I definitely do not like. There is something wrong with this port. <laughs> yes, this port isn't. Uh, normally, you can turn it and it will lock itself. But for some reason, maybe it's machining or something like that, I can just, uh, well, turn it all the way around. So that, that's not good. So I will uh, have contacted them uh, about that. But yeah. And still, it is a Chinese machine. Uh, there is just um, maybe the the brand is uh, Polish, but of course these things are made in China. So uh, let's um, put this aside and let's get a look at the uh, well, the welding slug, slang. What the hell is this? Yeah, I do know it's a face mask, but don't include this. You, this is so cheap. This makes the whole experience of this machine just go out of the window. This is don't include this. Make a nice cover for a machine or something like that. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be fancy, but do not include this. This is so, yeah. It just ruins the whole experience getting this machine. Really. I re Same as this. What the hell is... What are you going to brush with this fruit? What are you going to brush with this? this is, is, this, is this super supposed to be a hammer? You don't want to sharpen it because a kid can hurt itself? I... Get out. Well, here we have a uh, MMA stick. It is a different one than I ha had in the um, in the uh, tick welder. It, uh, yeah, it, it's a cheap unit. Um, what can I say about that? Probably the wire is the most uh, expensive thing on uh, on that thing or so. 
Well, this is a piece of hose, of course, for uh, connecting to a uh, flask or something. Yeah, probably not going to use that. There was a nice uh, hose in the um, the tick machine, and now you get a piece of well, garden hose. Don't include cheap stuff. Not. I know the machine is cheap as well. But... Definitely not cheaper than the, uh, the, 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 the machine feeds. Well, here we have an instruction in uh, only, only polish. Come on. I do understand you're a Polish company, but you do sell outside of Poland. So why not include an English manual, at least? Most people can read English. Most. I do know that French and Italians and, uh, and Germans are really reluctant to learn English, but at least include an English manual. If it was a normal stick welding machine or a normal MIG machine, yeah, you probably can get away with it because, well, it's that simple. But we have a machine that has a, a menu options and stuff like that. Include a at least a, uh, a English manual or I give them the benefit of the doubt. I will check online. Maybe they have a English manual online. No, they don't. They do not have an English manual online. <sighs> fix that. Be fix that. Really, really fix that. Well, we do have a other wheel in here. This is... Oh, this is probably what I meant by, uh, by a feeder tube thing. I did not know that uh, you have special for uh, steel and for uh, aluminum. Well, these things are uh, those clamps. Well, those are going into the bin directly. Oh, this is probably for... Oh, okay. Oh, I did. I really did not know that you have to change this. I do know about these wheels. Yeah, this, these are indeed steel uh, for steel. Oh, and the right size. So this is uh, eight and uh, one millimeter. So that is uh, convenient. Well, here we have uh, the earth clamp or negative. This is just the same as on the tick machine, oh, of course, with a uh, thicker wire. It does say it is a one times 25. I do believe that uh, that was not mentioned on the um, on the tick machine. Same clamp. It's okay. Definitely not the best. Uh, it works. So let's have a look at the. How do they call those this thing? A welding welding cable. At first glance, yeah, it's a welding cable. It is it's quite flexible. It's quite. It feels sturdy. The material used looks very, feels and looks very premium. Of course, the backside is always plastic and it should be something like an ABS. Don't know for sure. It does feel like it. Of course, we have our, our liner and I do think this is some kind of PTFE stuff. I doubt this is a Teflon, Teflon liner. Well, now the, the gun itself. Ooh. Hmm. I don't really know if I like this. Uh, of course, the system is a uh, two-trigger or a, a two-T or a four-T system, so it really has a trigger. 
like a so hopefully it works just by pressing this for well 2t operation uh, maybe you need that extra click for the 4t operation but that is something we uh, other than that well the snout it came pre-assembled with Hmm, I doubt this is normal. Maybe it's just loose. I have to check that. I never ever uh, hold a a MB24 uh, type gun or pistol or thing. So I do not know for sure if this has to be loose or not. I doubt it. Uh, it should be. Well, I have to look into that. The trigger for now I do not like, um, it just feels, the trigger just feels cheap, so I have to try it in practice. Other than that, it looks fine, I don't know exactly how long it is, something about 2 meters I think. So yeah, let's open the machine. Okay, the handle I did not have to remove, but uh, oh well. And this is uh, the same thickness of material. It looks like here is some kind of a step down from 220 to, well, probably something like uh, 24 volts or 12 volts maybe even. Uh, I'm not really a big electronic guy. I know my way around, but I'm definitely not an expert. And uh, it does look like that there is the brain of the operation itself. I also see a place for something called a for Wi-Fi. Uh, of course, this one doesn't have Wi-Fi, so maybe it's a well a board used in more devices that maybe even have Wi-Fi, but this one doesn't definitely not have it. As you can see here, we have the uh, transistors and some big, of at least uh, yeah, two big uh, inductors. And also, just like the the tick I have, there is quite a crap of lacquer on the on the board itself it just doesn't look like that every component here has lacquer on it and uh, that was something that the other machine definitely had all the connectors are uh, well with some silicon put down so those are definitely not going loose I would rather have seen also some silicon on the uh, big capacitors here and maybe even the small ones because of course it, this is a portable device and these things uh, well are pretty heavy and especially when you put stuff down and of course we are not that uh, gentle with devices so that would probably be a good thing to well glue this uh, down also. But other than that, it's quite bare. The, the TIC device had a lot more uh, transistors than this one has. It has probably reasons for that, but uh, I definitely do not know. Oh, I did not see you there. Is this an amp clamp? Yeah, it is. Okay. Of course, no name brands. I believe these, I saw something like Hong on the capacitors, 
So I do not expect name brands here. Other than that, these are the main leads and by the size or the thickness of, well, the plastic at least, it looks indeed like uh, two and a half coming in. And we have got a fan in the back. It is just a 80 millimeter fan. It is indeed an 80 millimeter fan. I uh, measured it just now. There is a little bit of a well, duct here. But yeah, the main thing is quite compact. Here we have the um, wire feeder motor. It's not as big as I would love to see it. I'd rather have a little bit more beefier motor there. But to be honest, these motors are getting a lot better and more torquey. This is a 40 watt motor on 24 volts. It doesn't mean that it's getting 24 volts. It's maybe even just uh, getting 12 volts. I just do not know. I could measure it, but uh, I do not think that is really important. Oh, there we have, of course, the uh, solenoid for the gas. It's connected to a, I do believe this is also one of those PTFE tubes. And it's going to the front, of course. And for some reason, this is loose. Huh. I definitely are going to tie that up. But there you have it, the insides of uh, the machine. And because I already removed the handle, I'm going to, uh, well, adjust it a little bit so that the handle isn't that sloppy uh, as it is now. And I can probably do that very easy just by pinching the end a little bit. So, and that's it. No more uh, clunky wobble. So this one was in there and oh, this one was in there and this we have to replace with but as you can see the snout is shorter so do I need to shorten it or do I need to put it not in there as much well it's uh, maybe that's not really a problem because there is a little bit of a shoulder here so it just barely, barely misses the roller. So, okay, that's uh, how it is. And it probably has to do something with uh, that, of course, uh, that aluminum wire uh, expands more. So, um, maybe with heat stuff, you need to, uh, well, have a little bit of room. But then this thing comes in. Do we need to shove it in there? Or is this for the gun? Oh, let's uh, check the manual. Hopefully there is something in there. Or at least a picture or something. Maybe I need to uh, do a crash course polish. Well, there is something about those wheels in here. Why do I have a feeling you have to put this in here? One, because it almost fits perfectly. And second of all, because this is of course uh, some kind of uh, messing or brass-like. Uh, th this is definitely softer than the wire. So you would put in some kind of a uh, sleeve for that. But we do have this wire or this PTFE tube 
the does of course the same it just fits too perfectly here and you have here a I don't know I absolutely do not know for now let's put on the uh, V groove on well the right side around and snip this off Stuff like this uh, really confuses me sometimes because I want to give a fair review, but uh, I just don't know where this goes. I thought I had a new roll laying around, so for now we're going to use this. I definitely are going to uh, get a new roll and test it with that. This is a bit weird. Um, it is not that it doesn't work, it is just... Um, ah! It is just a bit meh. What I most of the mostly do is... Uh, just jank the wire, and if it doesn't slip, then it's tight enough. Let's turn it on for the first time, and let's uh, have a look at the menu. From the pictures I've seen, it is at least in English. Oh! At least there is a fan control on this, uh, in the contradiction of, of course, the uh, the TIG welder. As you hear, there is no no fan going on right now. Okay. Okay, this looks like it is controlling the amps, but also the voltage. Well, let's keep that at zero percent. And this is, I think, the thickness of the material. It's now uh, set at uh, twin pulse, every uh, well mixed gas settings, 0 0.8 millimeter uh, wire, uh, and the 2T system. This is doing the voltage. I do not exactly know what that is for. Ooh. Okay, this is for a uh, wire feed. And this is for a, uh, well, check gas. Well, let's see what the menu is doing. Select, change value. Okay, this has something to do with induction. And just a guess of the symbol stuff. So I really need to read into that. Uh, what does this do? Oh, okay. There are more. Oh, okay. So now I can select the different. So if I, do I choose this? No, this is still gas. This then. And I still wire. Okay. Yeah. So with this, I can change the type of welding we're going to do. So we have pulse mic, twin pulse, just a normal mic mac, stick welding. Well, as you can hear, the fence kicking on also. Tick welding, pulse stick, pulse mic. Oh, okay. So it also does pulse stick, but probably not ACDC. And it probably also has, uh, does not have the um, high frequency uh, start, so you have to uh, uh, stri strike it. Well, what did it say? Welding material. Okay, so this is ALMG5. Ooh, uh, is that uh, just al 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 aluminium? 
different type. This is uh, stainless steel E308, but that's the uh, adding material, I believe, 308, because uh, 306 you are welding with E308. Oh, 316, of course, is uh, that other stainless steel and uh, ferron argon 82 percent okay so let's set it at that and this is i think the wire yeah, wire diameter and you can go from 06 to one okay that's odd maybe if you're and what's going on I'm confused. Uh, okay, so now we have a Mig Mac. It's still one. Okay. Is it me or. I did thought you had wire that is thicker than one. Maybe if I change the thickness of the material. No, it's still one. So let's put it at uh, 0 0.8. And this is, of course, 2T. Okay, continuing spot, 2T, 4T, spot 4T, okay, spot 2T. Well, symbols like this, I do have a idea of what it is, but is this the percentage of time the wire isn't touching? It's just annoying that I don't have a, the manual in English, so I cannot look it up, so I have to translate it myself burn back time yeah i do think that is the that the wire the, the old-fashioned way is of course every time it makes contact and there is a piece of wire just breaking off and fertiling the uh, and well into the puddle and it, this is probably that you can set it to that or to a degree that you want creep start time is this, I think, the probably the, the starting speed of the wire, and then it goes to the desired uh, speed. Okay, and here indeed you can do the pre-flow and the post-flow time. But definitely my old machine also did not have. And you can save your settings. Uh, let's see how many... Oh, okay, so we have 36 points we can save that is definitely a good thing to have especially when you are welding a lot of the same stuff does twin pulse have some difference it does uh, well this is the burn back time pulse frequency duty cycles between welds so on off on off so it is 50% on 50% off And this is the pulse amplitude of pulse welding. Isn't that uh, the time between stages? So it's 100%, 50%, 100%, 50%. I do think it's that. And pulse voltage, I, I don't know exactly that what voltage has to do with it because uh, the old machines are always amp based and not voltage based. I do think voltage you need for penetration but I do not know for sure, and the base voltage. Like I said, if we're just now farting around in the menu, just uh, to have a first look. It does make Mac have some... Well, it does have post-flow and pre-flow, that's, that's definitely something. MMA. Yeah, I'm not really into the MMA welding. Uh, slope, cellulose, well, plants have cellulose, but uh, that's not probably not it. VRD, I also do not know what it is. TIG welding does not have anything except for the amps. Pulse stick does have uh, things, on and off pulse, just like, uh, well, of course, the uh, uh, what we have seen before. And then we have the pulse make again. Well, I do think I need to study this thing a little bit more on my own.
Well, I uh, bought some new wire. It's in the machine already. I used a uh, right size tip because the original one was a 1.2. And of course I need a uh, 0.8 because that's the wire I'm using. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do some test welds. I got some pieces of metal and these are, I do believe these should be, yeah, these are the two millimeters thick. So let's uh, set the machine up. I'm just going to let the machine decide, uh, well, what I sh uh, the amperage I should use in the different methods. And what I mean by different methods is of course the twin pearls and the single pearls and of course the, well, traditional uh, uh, welding. No, I'm not a professional welder and I'm probably never going to be one. I just want to glue some metal together. Okay, the first thing what we're going to do is the traditional old-fashioned style welding. So let's set, let's set this to, well, stock MIG-MAC. Of course, uh, Ferris Argon uh, 0.8. I'm going to use the 2T function. I'm not going to change this in any way. So let's uh, the machine decide what kind of amperage I should use. And we have two millimeter plate. So, as you can see, between the two millimeter plates, there is a little bit of fire uh, rarity. So let's start three. So if this is one, two, three, four, four. Well, let's start at uh, the first one. So the machine says 100 amps, 6.7 uh, meters a minute. That's of course for the, uh, the wire and 70.9 volts. That's a really little bit high on the uh, Oh, I welded the two pieces together. <laughs> As you can hear, the fan is kicking on. Hopefully it will turn off again, but I do not know for sure. To be honest, this is of course the first weld I do with this machine, so uh, let's give it another go. does have some uh, penetration as you can see but also these are quite thick on top let's try pulse next so the same settings 0 0.8 to millimeters and we do the first one again it's definitely a lower uh, amperage um, and the voltage is a little bit higher, or well, quite a bit higher. Well, that's definitely a lot different sound. Let's do it again and a little bit faster because I. It is a little bit. Uh, more, how do you call it, uh, flatter than the other beat. Penetration is really good. The third option is of course the, what I'm doing now, twin pulse, yeah. And we still need to uh, do two millimeters. It is now 72 amps, 6.2. I do not think those changed with that other setting we had, the um, with the single pulse. No, as you can see, they uh, stay the same. The beats are really wide.
that's definitely a lot different. So let's uh, do that again. So here we have the three test pieces. Like I said before, I'm not a welder. I'm not, not going to pretend to be one. Uh, I do just know how to stick some uh, pieces together. Um, this is of course the traditional one. Um, but as you can see, it even looks like, if you look on the plates itself, that the traditional way has less splatter than the pulse one and the double pulse one. Other things what I definitely, uh, what I'm just uh, seeing is that, uh, well, the traditional one is a lot higher, but uh, definitely a smaller beat than the other two. Well, I did some read up of course of, uh, well, what uh, the difference is between the voltage and uh, of what the voltage does with a weld and to uh, what they say is the lower the voltage the more penetration to some degree a higher voltage you get well indeed of with a lower voltage you get indeed a smaller beat and a little bit more penetration and that is definitely what you can see here um, with a higher voltage you get a little bit more of a wider bead but less penetration as you can definitely see with uh, the pulse and the double pulse one of course it is to some degree uh, it has to do a little bit with penetration and but it, it is a rule of thumb it, it's it's not a definitely not a how lower the voltage, how more penetration test. And there is a point then that it's not going to work anymore. So there is a ballpark and that is the, uh, a little bit lower voltage, you get a little bit more penetration. A higher voltage, you get a little bit wider bead. Uh, so the, the penetration is going to be in the, in the width and not in the depth. Um, that's in layman terms. There's something I could uh, understand at least. Uh, but there is a diminishing return in too high or too low, so that you have to figure it out for yourself. Luckily for us, this machine does it. What can I say about the beats itself? Well, to be honest, these ones are quite ugly. Um, if it was my old machine, I definitely would have turned the amperage down. So for me, this amperage is too high. I had the feeling I really had to rush the weld. Um, this may be my inexperience or my because I am an amateur, uh, I like to take my time uh, with welding. So I'd rather have a slow a weld puddle and that I can fill in um, so I can keep up. But that is maybe my inexperience with, uh, with welding. But other than that, yeah, it, it, it's a beat, uh, it's on there. Maybe even the wire speed a little bit less. Hmm. Okay, so back to often uh, to the next one. This is of course the normal pulse weld. Uh, as you could hear, it is um, definitely a, a other type of method. Yeah, this is uh, this is sounds like bacon, and this sounds uh, like uh, well a uh, mosquito. <laughs> Let's call it that. Like I said before, the weld is definitely a lot uh, wider than the traditional one. Other than that, the heat pattern is a little bit less maybe. But it does have the, the right... This is, like I said, this is the penetration I like to see it's, instead of... Uh, instead of this, but that's my personal opinion. Other than that, yeah, the weld is flatter, but still a little bit fat. Uh, 
other than that, yeah, you can see, yeah, it, 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 I just do normal st uh, stringers. It's not definitely not the best. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, double pulse. The double pulse, uh, yeah, it's it's just like on my TIG welder. It's a uh, on off on off uh, kind of thing, or high volt of uh, high amperage, low amperage, high amperage, low amperage. And as you can see, I don't want to say it's a diamond forming, but you can see there is a wave, and that's definitely not happening on the uh, on the other two, or not happening. That's that's a bit of a uh, lie, but as you can see, with the double pulse, it's definitely a lot more wavy than with the normal, uh, well, the single pulse, let's call it the single pulse. And as you can see, with the normal settings, it's just a, well, this is just a flat nothing just there is no ripple effect on it whatsoever also these are just a little bit flatter than even the single well uh, pulse and if i have a look at the heat pattern i do like the penetration a lot so let's uh, do that again and now I'm going to uh, try to just make a normal butt weld, nothing too fancy, and uh, let's see how that goes. Well, that was a failure. To, to be honest, I find it uh, hard to control in the settings how it is now. I have no idea how it's uh, flowing. Like I said, if it was me, I definitely would have uh, put the amps down or the wire speed or something because I just cannot handle the speed uh, it is uh, wanting to well me yet but then again it's probably not a machine fault it's definitely my uh, my experience uh, that's in the way a little bit off. <laughs> oh well. I would have lost some seen some more penetration. Let's try the uh, double pulse. I definitely would have uh, liked some little bit more penetration. But to be honest, I really can get used to uh, that du double pulse so well. For some reason it's... I do still think it is a bit too hot. I do still think it's going a little bit too fast for me. But uh, it is easier to control at least that is what i think it also leaves a pretty nice well in this case of course just a stringer bead 
So I definitely can uh, get used to uh, the uh, double pulse uh, stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fart around a little bit with the settings and do some uh, beats in no particular order or something. I'm just going to weld. It's not uh, really clean, but uh, I just don't want to do it. Let's see what it does. That's hot! That's really, really hot! <laughs> well, we don't have any... Uh, Traces on the back. But still, the weld is really, really nice. But still, a lot of spatter, to be honest. So let's uh, set it on a single pulse. Let's see what it does. <laughs> I need definitely some uh, thicker gloves uh, using that. Ah. Well, that's not a bad beat. I still like the double pulse better because you have a little bit more of a wrinkle effect, a wave effect. But that is definitely not bad. Um, I would expect a little bit more bacony bacon sound. So I do think that the wire speed is much too high. Did I found something annoying? Yeah, it looks like I cannot change the wire speed. I can change the starter wire speed, but I cannot change the wire speed. Ooh, that's annoying. Oh, this, 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 this is annoying. For uh, well, really thinner material, this is the thing this. This is the thinnest I have in the shop. This is uh, 0 0.8 and this sink or uh, coated. So it is for uh, normally used for body repair with cars and stuff like that. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's try it again. I did it a little bit slower the second time. There is a lot of penetration. So let's do some spot welding. Not too bad actually. This was something I definitely never would be able to do on uh, my other device. Or at least not those stringers, definitely not. So let's see how Pulse does.
There is a lot of splatter. A lot. I would not have uh, expected with pearls. At least not uh, how they uh, sold it. As you can see, it also burned through. The weld is a lot flatter. The spray of beads is insane. Absolutely insane. I have the feeling that it just tosses, instead of getting into the puddle, it just tosses it out there. The spot welds are definitely a lot shallower. There is a lot of penetration. Maybe I move a little bit slower. I have the idea that the or the Y speed has to be cranked up a little bit, but yeah, that's something we cannot do. Well, at least it's flat. That's m maybe the only positive thing I can mention about it. So, the three pieces. One thing that strikes me just at first glance, how insanely black the pulse two are and well how much cleaner the well the traditional uh, setup is. Of course these are just the stock settings in the machine, so I do expect them to, uh, to work as good as they can. Uh, without uh, well me messing with it. Of course, uh, the old-fashioned way, there is a, a lot of more of a hump on the top, and uh, well in this case even some sag through at the back. The spot welds are well what I'm used to a lot higher, and most of the time, of course, I want them to be flat as possible. It's just uh, less uh, cleanup. So, but yeah, penetration is good. Um, I doubt I would ever, or I, well, I just know that I would never got even a bead like this on uh, this thin of a plate with the old machine. So this is definitely a plus. Well, with this one, it is, yeah, it's, it looks like it just an atom you needed to me, well, both. Both really looks like they, the speed wire of the wire speed is just too low. Um, there is uh, less sag through, as you can see, with both. I do like these uh, bigger humps at the back for well spot welding, of course. So that's definitely uh, going to help. So yeah, what is my first impressions about this machine? Well, first of all, it is, isn't a review because I'm just not a experienced welder. I'm just not the person to give an opinion about that. I can only give you an opinion of someone uh, just want to do some welding in his shop, like most of us are. I am quite impressed for now. Uh, I definitely do like the uh, 
double pulse function. I'm not as impressed in that pulse function. I do think it's just a giant spray of uh, of well BBs and stuff like that. It's it's um, not what I would have thought it should be. So maybe it is something to do with the uh, configuration of the machine because there is a hidden menu in the machine where you can uh, select your um, your language. Yeah, there are some language options, even Dutch. But um, but even in there, there is a under a passcode some, um, of course, I do not know the password. Uh, some other features so you can uh, at least what the text is saying you can add your uh, materials and something something i will show you that uh, maybe right now on on screen what i mean by that okay to get to the uh, hidden menu you have to turn the machine off push these two buttons in and then turn the machine on and as you can see we're here in a uh, by a hidden menu uh, language, well, we have English, Russian, Polish, Spanish, German, Portuguese, French, Vietnamese, Italian, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Norwegian, Swedish, Chinese, and of course English again. So there are a lot of uh, languages in there. Yeah, I do think that this is a bit of feed correct, so you can, maybe I should measure the feed and if necessary, correct it with, uh, well, the feeder correct. Maybe uh, uh, it will solve some issues. Well, this is that kijk, input password to add method or material. I do not know exactly what it means. It could mean that there is a hidden, uh, if you have the right password, you go into a hidden menu. But if you read it like I read it now, it could also be mean that you with different passwords, you get different uh, add-ons, something like that. So I, I'm just not experienced enough to tell you what's going on with that pulse function, but it is just very violent, even more violent than uh, the, 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 well, the, the traditional uh, MIG uh, setting. Uh, other than that, well, let's uh, sum up what I do like about the machine. I definitely do like that uh, double pulse function. This is absolutely, in my opinion, it feels absolutely great. It gives me, I have the feeling more control over the puddle and stuff like that. And also the weld looks a lot cleaner and, and, and neater. I do like, uh, it's compact, it's definitely a plus. Uh, I need to uh, make a card, but I do think I'm going to use my old welder, gut it out and uh, place this thing on top of that. So, uh, well, uh, I do think it's making a great uh, welding card. So that is uh, a solution. It is sturdy. Like I said before, it's a nice uh, thick metal. I measured it is 1.3 width paint. So let's say uh, 1.2 millimeter thick uh, metal. Uh, with ABS uh, housing, I don't know completely for sure, but it is. I do think it's uh, it's ABS, so it looks sturdy. Menu you can set in a, a, a variety of languages. That is also, of course, a plus point for uh, a lot of people. So that is definitely something that I have to mention. The menu, it is pretty clear with the symbols and stuff if you know what the symbols mean of course uh, i do struggle a little bit still with which one which button which one but even with thick cloths you can use the, the menu as it is uh, intended so that is definitely a good thing the um the flexible of uh, this uh host thing is absolutely i had it almost in a pretzel no problem with uh, wire stuff I, uh, I i can put a knot in it and, uh, and it is work and it works i will show you well that is quite a knot but uh, as you will see 
and your wire fits just fine. Absolutely just fine. I can even uh, put it in a little bit tighter. No problems there. I do a, uh, a double nut. It just works fine. So that's definitely, it is, it's absolutely a fine, uh, fine piece of uh, equipment uh, there. Also, uh, the, the, the rubber they used, it feels good. It, it, it's, it just feels good. I do, I do know that with my other one, I definitely don't want to have any kinks in there. And uh, maybe it's also the age because this one, what I had on there was the original one. So maybe it was worn out uh, uh, after, uh, after such a long time of use. I do like the build quality of the components inside. I do like that I can just weld very thin materials and very thick materials with a lot of confidence. I have really have some confidence in, in these welds. Um, like I said, this is welds I definitely could not get out of my uh, old machine. Stuff I don't like. Wire feed. I definitely want to have that wire speed feed that I will be able to. And I do think uh, there is in that hidden menu a way to cons uh, make some adjustments about that wire speed. Um, it is something that I should not do. And I do have a feeling that at the high end of the amperage, you have a little bit too much wire and on the low end, you have a little bit too less and something, at least that is what I feel. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely the biggest minus what I could find on the machine is that we cannot uh, change uh, the wire speeds uh, well in our user manual. What I also, what I did not like, of course, is that, well, that is, is a minor thing, but it just makes, some, makes a uh, device like this so much, feels so much cheaper. This is just, it's, it's just a little bit of an adjustment and, and it feels a little bit more premium than it is. Oh yeah, and that welding mask stuff, please do not include that. It is such a letdown of a machine that you buy. Uh, please just get rid of it. It's, it's just... It's just the experience unpacking that's just completely lost, in my opinion. Also, maybe a little bit of a nitpick, but I rather spend, uh, like them to spend that on, well, the machine that we're buying. Because I can't believe that somebody uses it. It's, it's probably going into the, uh, by the most people, or maybe 99% of the people is just going right into the bin. Something I do not like is, of course, this thing, uh, well, is, well, uh, loose or just not working as it should. Uh, I doubt, I cannot really blame the machine on that uh, because I do think it's just a manufacturing defect. Of course, I'm going to uh, claim it with uh, the supplier. Hopefully they come up with a good solution. Other than that, the menu buttons layout, yeah, it, it's, it's on one side, it's really plain and simple. On the other side, it has, yeah, the, to do, yeah, the, the, how you use the buttons and stuff like that. It is not too complicated. It's a little bit of a nitpick, but yeah, I most of the time still turning the wrong buttons, but it is something I probably have to use, used to. But on the other hand, like I said, you can use it with thick gloves without uh, any problems. What I love to have seen is, of course, I do like the save functions. This is one thing that is uh, definitely good. But the problem is with save functions, at least with zero to, well, in this case, 35, we don't know which one is which. So it would be nice that you ca could at least put in a, well, you could see uh, that you could save under a name or something. But what I rather would have seen is just a menu, and I do think it's in there, in the, the need that hidden menu, that you could your uh, uh, input your own, well, let's say three millimeter uh, material, the wire speed, voltage, amperage, like that, and so you can select it 
just like you can do it now between well uh, uh yeah, just what you can do now let's uh, open up the uh of uh, start the machine and yeah, that you just can uh use it as uh now like uh, well if i dial this button you see uh, one one point two one point three one point four that your specific uh, safe will be shown in here and i do think it's in the machine but we cannot get to it that should be a lot better and of course everything is possible uh, these things are half uh, are just uh, very simple computers but yeah you have, must have a supplier that will uh, also support it i would have expect a little bit more a little bit more user friendly maybe but um, yeah how do you how would you how, or let me adjust these uh, standard included ones and adjust those or something but let me change that especially the wire feed i, I think the most I, I do think that most people uh, especially with skill, uh, skilled welders are going to uh, phone hey why we cannot uh, manually adjust the wires other than that i'm quite happy with the machine at least for now uh, i'm going to uh, do some more welding with it especially of course with uh, on the corolla and uh, well if i would find something that's irritating me or something maybe i make a follow-up video after a while to uh, see how uh, the machine holds up um but yeah that's it uh, for today's video hopefully you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it and if you did please give it a like if you want to follow me around you know what to do and i will see you next time bye <laughs>